Did I face any backlash or bullying for my content? And this is my fifth drop. Will it be worth it? The lack of sexual education in India. Question is, please share your famous breakup story. <laughs> so that is one paranormal activity which has happened to me in my life. It was very real. What's your relationship status? And shadi kab kar rahe I never really thought I'd be saying this, but welcome to the one million Q and A. We recently crossed one million subscribers on my YouTube channel, on our YouTube channel actually. And I'm gonna be answering some of the questions that you guys have sent me via Instagram and via YouTube. I got nearly like five to six thousand responses and sorting them out really did take quite a lot of time. I've got a mix of questions from my personal life, from content creation, from my medical life to need and so much more. So what are you guys waiting for? Let's roll the intro. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Anish Pachel and welcome back to my channel. I'm an MBBS intern working at GMC Nagpur and it's so nice to see you here. Let's start with the first question. It is slightly controversial but here we go. Did I face any backlash or bullying for my content in my college days? The straightforward answer is no, I did not. But like any other creator, no matter how big or small, I did face some of it online. Always remember whenever you're trying to do something new, something beautiful, something amazing, something out of the box that nobody ever dreams of, well, in that case, you're gonna get a lot of supporters and you're gonna get a few haters. There'll be people who will be criticizing you constructively, those are your true supporters. And there are people who are just fed up of their own personal life that will try to bring your mental health down. And no matter what field you go in, right from medicine to content creation to anything else, you will find this exact same situation. I'll give you a very beautiful example that actually happened with me recently. Recently, I released this video called as my love-hate relationship with the medical field. And in that video, I shared a lot of my experience as working in the hospital as a doctor. Many, many, many doctors resonated with it. A lot of people shared it on their WhatsApp groups. People in the hospital personally stopped and talked to me about the video which I had made. But at the same time, there are people who are like, this guy only shares about the toxicity, he only shares about the negativity or whatnot. But in reality, if you go look at literally any other video which I've made, I've just expressed how amazing this field is, why I love this field so much. Put it simply, the video was about my love for the medical field, but my problems with the healthcare system. I do not expect neat UG people, 11, 12th repeaters to be understanding what I'm saying at that point because they're literally too young and I've never worked in hospital before. When you make a video talking about the positives of MBBS life, people go out of their way to tell you that this is just a false reality, this is toxic positivity. And when you actually talk about the other stuff, people go out of their way to to tell you that this person only promotes negativity. You cannot satisfy them both. The thing that you should be knowing is, is the videos which I make are based on fact and not opinion. Opinions can be anything but facts are absolute. Mount Everest is the tallest mountain in the world. If you want to believe it or if you don't want to believe it, you can live in a delusion. But that's not going to affect the reality of what the situation actually is. So short answer, I did not face it at all in real life. In fact, most of the professors, unit heads and HODs also watch my videos in my college. In fact, 99% of the people that I interact with actually generally do like my content. I'm really proud of this positive community I've built over the last few years and I cannot imagine my life without it. That was quite a heavy one. Moving on to the second question. Sir, I'm a 23 year old, same age, and this is my fifth drop. My scores are not good. Even if I get into a college, will it be worth it? And is above 20 years of age okay to enter MBBS? To be very honest, any drop after the first one, you have to put 110% of your efforts. Tum sote, utte, jaakte hue, sab samay, you should be only, only thinking about your studies. And if it's your fifth drop and scores are not going well, give your best attempt. I do not want to demoralize anybody. But if that attempt does not go well, make sure you have some backup plan in your mind. Because you cannot keep giving the neat exam over and over and over again. And to answer your question, if you enter your MBBS college, will it still be worth it? Well, of course, it will be worth it. But you have, you'll have to put equal amount of effort to pass each year as much as you've did in your fifth attempt for NEET. Because MBBS is not easy. Especially if you want to be a good doctor, it is literally quite difficult. But to sum up my answer, don't think about how many attempts have you done. Give your best in this one. And it's completely okay to start MBBS at any age. Just be prepared to work hard for a few years. A lot of the residents which we have over here have come from in-service. That means they have been in service working in many hospitals for a few years. They took a break, let's say 5 years, 10 years, 12 years. And then they have joined the PG course. People like that also do exist and they also do well. So age is something that you should not really be bothered about. Medical field is really a long period of time. But just know that repeating an exam over and over and over again, where your strategy is same, where the efforts that you're putting are same and expecting different results is a fool's game. Don't play it. I hope I'm clear about that. Alright, next question. Share one of the most crazy cases that you witnessed during your internship. So coming to the case itself, I do not want to label it crazy or I do not want to label it bad. I just found this case to be really fascinating. So one day I was in the labor room and I went to my duty. My seniors asked me to go to this patient and take her samples. Uh, I went there with all my equipment. I just took her file, just took a look just to see why was she admitted in our particular labor room. I noticed that the diagnosis in her file was written as a, this is a 25 year old female ANC 20 weeks with history of poisoning. So I was like, why is this pregnant female of five months uh, has consumed any poison? And I was really shocked. 
so i flipped through her file it was a huge file and i was like poisoning cases don't come here they have to go into the medicine icu because that's that's where we actually manage all the poisoning part in our college so this patient was actually unmarried and she was pregnant in the first place uh, since 5 months 14 days ago she took some pills to abort the baby pills are not supposed to be taken after 9 weeks essentially nothing much happened to her she took all of this very illegally there was no prescription to be found out what happened few days after was that maybe the parents got to know or somebody was involved she drank a bottle of herbicides uh, and presented to us with organophosphorus poisoning so the treatment management was done basis on the basis of op poisoning and then since since she had already crossed 20 weeks by the time she was with us we had to get the opinion of the medical board in order to carry out the abortion because that was what she was intending to do yeah, she was in the icu for the 5 days and after that she was transferred to the labor room maybe she might or might not have undergone the procedure this happened like 4 to 5 weeks back i have lost touch with the patient because my shift was changed my duty was changed but this was a really fascinating case to me first of all the whole concept of this unmarried anc thing that means the the patient was unmarried who gets pregnant that's always looked down upon in society and second of all i cannot imagine the mental situation of this mother to go so far out as to drink poison to end her life just because of maybe one mistake she made 5 months back and i cannot tell you how many dms i get every day on instagram about people asking me what to do sir i have missed my period etc this was the date uh, we had intercourse it was unprotected etc of course i cannot advise anything the fascinating part about this to me was actually the lack of sexual education in india in foreign countries it's a very big deal but in india it is rarely the case and that actually leads to so many complications down the line people are unaware they are uneducated they do not know the right practices the right tools they should be using and that actually causes a lot of problems medically there are so many things online which can confuse people literally i really hope and pray to god that this person which i just talked about in the video is well in fact her family is doing well and i also uh, and i also urge the government if they are watching the video for some reason try to make some policies try to add some subjects just few classes on sexual education at least in school Times, at least in college times so one knows what to expect when they go into adulthood literally just two months back i had this one girl who was a 17 year old she told me that she had missed her period after after having unprotected intercourse with somebody and 17 year old that's that's a minor if only there was some education present to help these individuals which will help the young minds who are venturing out into adulthood that would just make everything so much easier it would prevent so many lives being lost hum case ke bare mein discuss kar rahe the now we are somewhere else as far as the rare cases which i've seen which i really liked is first of all marjolin cells which is like a squamous cell carcinoma growing on the burn wound next i saw charcot marie tooth disease so it's another disease which we are seeing in the pediatric population i saw scapulo muscular humeral muscular dystrophy atakatsuba cardiomyopathy in the micus and during the gynae posting i saw a case of pseudo pseudo make syndrome so that's also amazing but this was a particular case which i had thought was fascinating to me for the reasons which i just mentioned chalo let's move on to the next question please have you ever experienced any paranormal activities in the hospital before going to internship my senior actually told me about the story uh, there was this ward called as ward 45 in our hospital okay before the entire warding system was rechanged there was this ward 45 and my senior told me that ये वार्ड आज तक किसी इंसान ने नहीं देखा है मतलब क्यों नहीं देखा है भाई दे हैड टू चेंज दिस वार्ड इनटू समथिंग एल्स सो दे एक्चुअली क्लोज दैट वार्ड डाउन इट इज पॉपुलरली नोन इन आवर हॉस्पिटल दैट इफ यू आर एन इंटर्न हु यू आर वर्किंग वेरी लेट नाइट एंड यू आर वेरी वेरी टायर्ड एंड यू आर मे बी गोइंग फ्रॉम वन प्लेस टू द अदर प्लेस इन द नाइट इट्स लाइक कंप्लीटली इन द नाइट जी एम सी इज लाइक कंप्लीटली शांत ज्यादा कुछ आवाज नहीं होती एवरीबडी इज माइंडिंग देर ओन बिजनेस मोस्ट ऑफ पीपल आर एक्चुअली स्लीपिंग एट लाइक टू थर्टी और थ्री यूर गोइंग टू सम प्लेस एंड सडनली वॉट हैपन्स इज दैट You see this ward 45 out of nowhere. There will be children. There will be people inside the ward who will be calling you for help. Your doctor, save this person, save this person. And once you actually go inside that ward, you will never come out. So this is the myth which has circulated a lot of interns during internship. Is के कारण काफी डर भी लगता है randomly night में कि ward 45 दिख ना जाए. But keeping the story aside, I personally have not experienced anything paranormal uh, in my internship whatsoever. I did experience a very serious paranormal activity when I was in Switzerland. I was alone inside a flat and it was on the top of the floor. Uh, एकदम पेंट हाउस पे था वो उसके ऊपर जस्ट रूफ टॉप वॉज देयर एंड स्विटरलैंड नो स्टेयर ओनली लिफ्ट वॉज देयर टू रीच द रूफ टॉप इट वॉज रफली थ्री इन द नाइट एंड आई वॉज स्लीपिंग आई हर्ड अ फ्यू पीपल डांसिंग ऑन द रूफ एंड दे वॉज जस्ट लिटरली स्टॉम्पिंग देयर फीट इट वॉज डेफिनेटली समथिंग ह्यूमन एंड इट वॉज लेट नाइट so i was very scared i was first time alone in an international country that too switzerland so that is one paranormal activity which has happened to me in my life it was very real but in the hospital not yet i hope aisa kuch ho na aage kyunki bahut sare saal aur hospital mein kaam karna hai okay so the next question is pretty simple how do edit videos like you do so i use this software called as davinci resolve studio as my main editing software so i recently shifted from the free version to the paid version that is the studio one and my editing workflow basically is like first arrange the first cut that means whatever you are speaking whatever you are talking wo ek arrange ho jaye your basic storyline form and then add whatever additional shots you need to complete your particular story always remember editing does not really matter that much if your content is good people will even watch an unedited video 
I play a lot around the color grade as you can see this is the video before and this is the current version of the video so color grading is very essential to me during making my videos just as another layer for your video to be seen with and just keep the content engaging and there you go that's how you edit like me question is please share your famous breakup story <laughs> so i was in kolkata and somebody asked me this uh, and i guess somebody uploaded a clip of it and it kind of went viral Here's my famous breakup story for all of you guys that are interested. It happened to me back in school days. It was 9th standard and I was crazy about this girl uh, and I had a huge crush on her since like many years. I finally got the courage and asked her out and finally she said yes we were in a relationship. Very very happy. It's all good. 10th standard ke starting mein we broke up because of 10th standard ki padhai. As it happens in school relationships to be very honest and it was like I was crushed. I was really really sad. And from the moment we break up I did not ever look at her. I did not even have an eye contact. I did not even look at whichever side she was sitting on because it was uh, not not that good for me. I really did not study that much up until 8th standard so 9th mein 10th mein I was studying very much and I made it my life goal to just study so much that maybe she'll notice me in the future so 11th happened 12th happened and my need results came i was all in rank 85 again nagpur my one of the toppers at that point the coaching institutes in which i went out so many posters all across nagpur there was literally a point where i would stand in one square and there were like four posters of me all around that particular chalk i've been on almost all the billboards of nagpur at least once especially of the area near to that tuition class there was a billboard right next to her house and that billboard had a huge photo of me saying about the marks and the ranks which i had gotten and that was a very proud moment for me ki finally after all the years she might notice me and guess what she actually did we are good friends now but that was the famous breakup story i think that breakups are very essential in a man's life for development maybe in a woman's life as well but especially for a man they are really really useful actually make you take a step back and focus on all the goals that you really want to achieve and the time that you're spending on one particular relationship you can have that all towards your goals you can just explore and just um, get your face on all the billboards across town Next question is do you smoke or drink sometimes or yearly so take a guess i'll give you 2 seconds yeah well the answer is no i have never smoked anything in my entire life i have never drunk a single drop of alcohol ever and i plan on keeping it that way i see a lot of my friends i see a lot of my peers actually indulging in social drinking and alcohol and drugs and even sometimes doing shit much more crazier than that i feel like we have normalized this way way too much being in the hospital i know first hand what the effects of these things could be on your day to day lives and how an addiction how, and how an addiction and maybe a hepatocellular carcinoma of a person admitted into our unit started just from a sip of single alcohol which their friend told them to drink an alcohol or smoking or drug addiction starts from just one single sip one single puff of smoke and one single iv injection and as you can imagine it's never ever good i plan on staying clean for the rest of my life and i absolutely have no problem with anybody else who indulges with smoking alcohol it's your life it's your body it's your liver it's your lungs it's your hearts be wild be crazy but as far as i'm concerned i don't do that so yes that has been it moving on to the next question man these questions are really amazing by the way your opinion on god and how has it changed after joining the medical field so this is my clip from the second year of mbbs just telling everybody vividly that i am an atheist i do not believe in god and here i am in final year mbbs reading all the spiritual books that my religion has to offer praying to god from time to time acknowledging a force that is beyond me so what has changed i was an atheist all the way up to final year but when i entered internship i saw the real situation of people i saw the pain and suffering in their eyes i saw so many deaths during the internship right from small small babies small small neonates dying all the way to big individuals dying and it has been definitely tough on me at that point i actually realized what my parents have been telling me all along ki when the time is right you will feel it i could not stop thinking about the pain and suffering of my patients which i had seen right from a person with an amputated forearm who just came to us for something else or thinking about that one subscriber who actually lost his mother and i was posted in the medicine icu or thinking about how cancer is slowly killing people off i actually got to know in the 28 days of my posting so i started my journey for spirituality i went to a mandir near my house and just sat there in the aarti for once and i actually felt uh, things getting easier for me i felt the weight lifting off of my shoulders that's when i actually realized god hai ki nahi ye matter hi nahi karta that's not the question in the first place we need a god everybody working in the healthcare has no science more than anybody but still doctors are the strongest believers in the forces greater than themselves because they know how beautiful and how strange life can actually be and there are certain things which you cannot explain just by science i'd be too egoistic to say that we actually can so that's how my spiritual journey started and that's how it has changed over the last 4 years especially in the last 1 year of internship i've seen life and death more closely than i've ever had in my life my nani also recently passed away my guruji also recently passed away and believing in a force greater than yourself gives you peace in times of disparity and decreases your suffering and the suffering of others around you and i think that's 
never a bad thing. It does not matter to me if God is real or not. It matters to me that thinking about God or a presence makes my life easier, and that's all I care about. The next question is, what are my favorite content creators, Indian and outside? So from India, I do not watch a lot of creators, but the one person which I really admire the most for the quality of the videos that this person makes is uh, Dhruv Rati, of course. He's an amazing, amazing person. Speaks very boldly on topics, and I really love the way he edits his videos. As a content creator myself, that's how I aspire to be. That's how many videos I aspire to make, and that's how the quality of the videos that I actually want to make. So Dhruv Rati is one person which I follow genuinely because I really love the way he presents his contents. From the outside, I watch a lot of foreign creators. In the education zone, I love Ninja Nerd videos. Comedy and skits, I really love Danny, Drew and also Curtis Connors. For entertainment, of course, it's Mr. Beast who is my favorite creator. And for life in general, I think it's probably PewDiePie. And lastly, I'm a pro player at Minecraft, so I follow that very religiously. I'm subscribed to almost all the Hermitcraft members from season 10. So right from Green to Mumbo to Pearl to Gem to Etho, all of these people make up my feed. <laughs> the last question which I'm going to answer here is right now. What's your relationship status? And Shadi kab kar rahe ho? Opinion on love along with your career. Alright, so let's talk about relationship and opinion on love and career before I actually move on to the relationship part. As far as career and relationships are considered, I would like to introduce you to this amazing concept called as Pillars of Happiness. So this was my concept for the first TEDx talk which I gave and it, to explain it to you simply imagine your own room and the roof of that room to be your happiness. Okay, how is that roof standing? There are pillars that are supporting that roof. Any one of these pillars is very strong and one of the pillars is very weak. What will happen? Your roof will collapse. Maybe two pillars are extremely strong but two pillars are just useless. What will happen? The roof will collapse. So in life, exactly to maintain your happiness, there are pillars and you have to work on all of these pillars at the same time. One of these pillars is career, one of the pillars is health, one is relationships, one is your family life, one is side hustles. All of these things are working in harmony. Only then will you find yourself in nirvana, true happiness or satisfaction. Let's say that you are the top most neurosurgeon, okay? You are earning so much money, but you have zero time for your family and just miss the growth of your child, the quality time spent with your parents. Would you be actually happy? Be like, no, yaar, thoda sa aur sam hota to main apne parents that time spent kar leta. Maybe you're a person who is just into a relationship and who has sacrificed all the things. They sacrificed your family, you've sacrificed your mental health, you've sacrificed your career just for your relationship. Even if a relationship is like gold, even if your relationship is with Bhagwan Krishna, you would still be unhappy. And the reason is because all the other pillars are invalid for you. Whatever I do in my life, I take into account all the pillars. One of these pillars is building a happy and healthy relationship with the people that I actually love, right to my family members and friends. Next is becoming a good doctor so I can treat my patients better. Next is making videos for you guys so that I am very happy because making videos makes me happy. So developing in the relationship sector is also very very essential for you. Your career should be an add-on to your life and it should not be your life in general. Within your career, you should be able to do whatever a normal person does without that career. For example, if a 25 year old is supposed to get married when he's 25, he's supposed to buy a house when he's like 35, you should be able to do that irrespective if you're a doctor or if you're a carpenter or if you're a mechanic. Career is just an add-on to you. Build all the pillars of happiness and you will see that it is so beautiful once you actually pay equal attention to all of that. But make sure that the relationship you're having with your own partner is healthy, it is fruitful and is actually making you both become better versions of yourself. If it's destructive to you or the other person, you can totally dump them. There are so many people in the world and there will be definitely many people who are fit for you. Keeping the corporate answer aside, let's come back to the real question which you're here for. What's your relationship status and shadi kab kar rahe ho? Well, there is a girl that I really do like. I'm just gonna leave it with it's complicated. I really hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and share this video to your friends and make them subscribe as well. It, it makes the subscriber count go up and that usually feels good. <laughs> Thank you so much for 1 million subscribers, my dear family, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.